how do you make substitutions if you have like multiple integrals? Okay, this is this topic is actually important for two reasons. The first one is, um, so I mean, just like how do you calculate integrals? I mean, you've been doing this all this time in Calc one. You've been making substitutions, so why shouldn't we be able to do it in Calc three? The second one is because the the key to understanding how you make substitutions in multiple integrals is to think of substitutions as transformations of space and that's really important because that's actually a preview of 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 a much bigger part of math the idea of a transformation of space is really the fundamental concept in a class called linear algebra. So this is the kind of content, it isn't like a one-off thing. This is the kind of content that you need to, you know, understand now so that you can, you know, get a good grade on the test, but then also just file it away in whatever part of your brain is like, okay, this is important for future use. Okay, here's the man here, Carl Gustav Jacob. Jacoby. Okay. Um, that was his name. Um, and uh, he was alive in the 1800s and he made a lot of important contributions to math. Um, you can you can read more about him here. Um, and uh, we're going to study one of his contributions today. He figured out how to make substitutions in multiple integrals. The key to unlocking this concept is to imagine substitutions as being transformations of space. So, so let's, let's just like go all the way back to Calc 1. I mean, you've been doing this whole time. Every time you've been making a U sub, this is what's been going on. Suppose that you're in a situation where you have like a function, but it's not just of x, it's of it's of 2x, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to make a u sub where u is equal to 2x. So let's look at the effect that that has on the area that you're trying to calculate. So suppose that you're thinking about something like x is in between 0 and 10, then since u is equal to 2 times x, u is going to be between 0 and 20. So the effect that that has is, is it stretches out the horizontal axis. So a small change in x is going to correspond to a very, a, a larger change in u. So if I just straight up calculated the area in u, y space, I would get a different answer than if I calculated the area in x, y space. So what we're going to have to do is account for that. If we want to calculate the area in xy space using uy space, we're going to have to scale our answer back down because the area in uy space is obviously bigger. So the question is, how much do we have to scale the area down by? Just to convince you that this is working the way that it's supposed to, I have a graph of just a, a half of a sine curve. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this transformation of space as an animation so we can watch this area get stretched out. Hopefully you can see that the area under the green curve is much larger than the area under the blue curve. By how much? I think everybody knows by now. I think, I mean, you all passed Calc 1, so I think you know how much bigger the area in UY space is going to be than the area in XY space. But let's just look. What, what does this substitution do? One half U is equal to X, then one half DU is equal to DX. So if I want to make these areas the same, then I trade out the 2X for U, and I trade out the dx for one half du because the area in uy space is exactly twice as big as the area in xy space. So if I multiply the answer by one half, then I will still be calculating the area in xy space. So that's what this is. You need to rescale all of the areas down by a factor of one half um, in in UY space in order to be able to calculate in, in order to be calculating the original area. So, so this whole time that like constant that you've been putting out in front of your integrals has been the Jacobian. That's what it is. We just name it after Carl. Um, we call this thing the Jacobian. It's it's the scaling factor. If you transform space, you may make uh, area or volumes bigger or smaller. So you have to rescale your answer back down in order to be uh, calculating, uh, you know, measuring some amount in the original space. So. The next thing we need to do is, is bump the dimension of these objects up, right? I mean, 
this this really makes sense if we just imagine you know just stretching or shrinking out a line by some amount but but w what what could this possibly look like um, if we have more variables what it could look like is a transformed region in the xy space so now we're going to have some kind of region here in xy space and then we're going to apply some kind of transformation and that's going to make the region you know shrink or grow or somehow change into uv space um so the issue is you know how much are we going to have to rescale um what the volume was in uv space and to, to so that we can figure out the answer in xy space Okay, um, I know it was just a quick jump for you. That was just a quick cut, but I've I've been here for a minute thinking about this. Um, the 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 challenging part of all of this is that you need to be able to go back and forth, not just be able to transform from XY space into UV space, but you need to be able to go back the other way. So like, look, this is what I'm saying, just like back to calc one here. If you have like U is equal to two X, right? That's usually how we make substitutions then it's easy. I can just look at this and say, okay, so obviously one half of U is equal to X. So if you, if you just have a one dimensional transformation, it's always really easy to see, you know, how, how, to, how to go backwards. And, and also you can see when, when I look at it in this way, when I solve it for X, that's really where I get this scaling factor because based on this equation, I can get one half DU is equal to DX. And, and that's what tells me what the scaling factor is, right? The Jacobian um, was actually one half so um, that's what I've done here. Just, just pause the video for a second and write down these two transformations. Um, you can see that the first one here, this top transformation, this I have it written here as though u and v is a function of x and y. So, so for this one, you're going to put in an xy and you're going to get a uv out. So this transformation takes xy space into uv space. Um, and then here I did some algebra, okay? Um, and that created the inverse transformation. You can see I've just solved, I've solved this original one here for x and y. And that now tells me, see this one takes a uv and it gives you an x and y. So this is the inverse transformation. This is like the difference between like multiplying by two and dividing by two. But now that we have more variables, it's a little bit more complicated. So, so write these down um, and then, then I'll, I'll explain this picture right here. I encourage you to Google Desmos linear transformation. That's what I Googled. And um, there's this really cool, uh, you know, like special uh, uh, Desmos page where somebody has made a little animation about what happens when you apply these kind of 2D linear transformations. So here you can see this is the transformation. I know it says X and Y there, but these are actually U and V in our problem. This is the transformation. So right now we're looking at X, Y space, and then I'm going to animate it, and that's going to transform it into U and V space. So let's have a look here. So I'm going to start the animation and here we go. This is what happens when you transform XY space into UV space under this transformation. So little rectangles turn into little parallelograms. Um, okay, so I, I cannot oversell the importance of this concept in your future math study. So look, if you got a minute, just, just go on this Desmos page and just start plugging in numbers and see what kind of different things can come out of this. There's a lot of really interesting learning that can happen if you just explore what happens if you put numbers into this uh, little matrix right here. The easiest way to understand what a transformation is doing is to plug in one zero and zero one. So let's do that now. That's this point right here, right? This point is zero one. So let's plug that into our transformation and see where zero one gets transformed to. So I'm putting zero for X and one for the Y and zero for the X and one for the Y. So where's U gonna go? U's gonna go to one, comma three. I might have had this written down uh, backwards before, so go check your notes and see if you need to fix that. Um, okay, and then let's also see what where we go if we go from one zero, okay? So this is gonna be here, one zero, and then one zero. So what's that gonna be? That's gonna now go to two, 
comma one, okay? All right, so what we need to know now is how big did I transform the area by? Okay, so this area, let's just bounce bounce back over. So this area in, in Desmos, that little rectangle right there, just, just this one right here, that first little rectangle right there, that had area one. And then when I stretched it all out into UV space, it turned into this area right here. Okay, so what we need now is the formula that lets us calculate the area of a parallelogram. <laughs> it's just like it all comes back to this area of a parallelogram every time. Okay, so so I did it. I calculated the area of this parallelogram. You just use that, you know, if you got if you got the old matrix A, B, C, D, you're just using the A, D minus B, C formula. That That is just all over math. So if you're not used to it, get used to it now. Um, so when we transformed our space from XY space into UV space, a little tiny rectangle got five times bigger. So what this means is if we want to figure out what the original answer was, I need to multiply, I need to rescale my answer down by a factor of one fifth. And it's really interesting. I encourage you to take a minute and to just use the AD minus BC formula on this. You should get J is equal to one fifth. Okay. All right, I, I know that that was complicated um, and that, that there's a lot of bouncing back and forth here between UV space and XY space. And I probably said it backwards at one point in the video. Um, you know, so if you have to, no shame and re rewind this and watch it again and watch me blah, blah, blah and break it down again um, so that you can do your, your best to understand which way we're going. Remember, if you stretch the space out, you have to rescale the answer back down in order to uh, recover back what the original answer was. Whenever I run into something like that in math where it's like, just like really mind blowing and confusing. I like to just, you know, I think that, that that's really the reason that we we name things after these people because you gotta be like, dude, I'm so glad that Carl figured this out for us. <laughs> However complicated this is, understanding it after Carl figured it out, remember, it was harder for him to figure it out the first time. Nobody else had done it before. Um, so the, the, the conclusion here is the right way to think about it is to imagine the transformation that takes uh, UV space back to XY space figure out the area of the parallelogram that's produced from that, and that is gonna give you the scaling factor um, that you need to scale your answer down or up by in order to figure out the original volume in XY space, yay.